Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are out there. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. and uh, Greetings, my excellent friend. It is so good to see you. Welcome in. Binary Chef just resubbed. Thank you so much. Five months. That is tremendous. My lights are not in the right place. There we go. Thank you so much for that resub. We'll make a donation to code.org. It is so good to see you out there, friends. Today is, what day is today? None of my screens have the date on it. Why don't I know what day today is? Why didn't somebody tell me what day today is? Today is March 5th, 2020. We're going to write a little bit of code today. I got my Pizza Planet hat on here. Look at this. I even got some, ugh, I got some fur, some lint on it or something. Um, because uh, uh, folks don't know this, but, um, well, maybe they do know this. See, look, I've, I, ugh, ugh. right? This is what I get for putting it with the laundry and stuff. Um, we, uh, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you saw this, that saw the news, but my colleagues at Microsoft are all, they've been asked to work from home as much as possible for the next three weeks. So this is a new experience for a lot of these folks to be working from home from the stately confines of wherever it might be. And uh, welcome, welcome to remote work life. It's uh, it's definitely, it's definitely going to get you, get you to see the other side of Teams and Skype and these other tools that we use for remote connections. Um, and you may learn why I like Discord 
a lot. Let me go. Let me say hello to folks here in the chat room. Um, scrolling up here, let me take a look here. Hugo Dahl is here. Unhip Coder. Copper Beardy. There's a member of the Live Coders team. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Daryl Code Stuff. Hello, hello. Uh, Alex Nichols. Hey there. Yeah, good to see you, Alex. Welcome in. Unhip Coder. Ready for more hamster? No, no more hamster. Not going to be doing that today. Um, <laughs> yep, Pizza Planet, Janescu. Absolutely. Uh, Rambling Geek is here. Rambling Geek, another member of the Live Coders. Svava Blount! Oh my goodness. There she is right there. See that? Discord does rock. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> hopefully they don't all end up going to coffee shops to work. Yeah, that just takes... Right, if everybody at Microsoft goes to the coffee shops to work, there might be a Starbucks or two in the Seattle area. Might. It kind of defeats the whole purpose of sending everybody home in the first place. But I have a, I have a sneaky suspicion that's going to happen. Folks are going to either be at Top Pot Donuts, they're going to be at the Starbucks, they're they're going to be at uh at at Joey and Bellevue. Joey and Bellevue, that's a thing. They'll be at Lot Three. MVPs out there, you know what I'm talking about. Lot Three. Oh, oh Lot Three. Um, donuts, donuts like our friend Dee Dee Walsh, who's actually on the East Coast this week. And isn't a fan of Duncan. She's she's gotten too much of the top pot donuts there that they have in Seattle. Um, so good to see everybody. House party at Scott Hanselman's place. At whose place? What? What's his name? Uh, wait a sec. I don't have it on that. Scott! Yeah, him. Right. There's only there are six different Scots. Every time you execute the Scott command. You'll hear one of six different Scott shouts. Uh, that's a thing. That's absolutely a thing. See, there's another one. Doc Brown. But um, I know the Scots aren't watching. That's okay. They've, they've got their own thing, folks, on the West Coast. Many of them I'm up before uh, the crack of noon for them. Um, <laughs> I tease. Um... So let me get some music playing here in the background, and uh, we're we're continuing our work with a Chromebook. I, I purchased a Chromebook on on my own dime. Nobody has to say, "Oh, is there budget from Microsoft for that?" Um, this this was paid for uh, by Jeff Fritz Enterprises Incorporated, a Delaware company. No, there is no such thing. Um, let me get this music playing here. This is music code by by our friend. Mr. Carl Franklin, scientifically designed, it's engineered to get you in the flow, get you in the groove, so that whatever task it is you're working on, you can focus on it and just get stuff done. Check it out, mtcb.pwop.com. We're going to execute the music command in the chat room, and uh, you'll get, uh, there you go, thank you, Hugo. You'll get a link, you can click through and get your copy of the music today. Uncle Bill Druin, good to see you. Hello, hello. Welcome in. JFE on the NASDAQ. No, no. Um, but the, the Life Coders actually now is an LLC. There is a management organization that handles uh, sponsorship and funding for the Life Coders. So, uh, MH Gaming, one, two, three. Welcome in. Hello, hello. So... A couple things I want to do today. I've got my Twitch partner jersey on also. Um, so I want to continue working with the Chromebook. Seeing what we can do, how we can be productive, and get into more of this very constrained Linux development. Um, I wanted to take a uh, half hour up front and just look at it. I've been saying this would be fun to do, and I, I, I'm, I'm putting a stake in the ground and we're going to do it. I want to actually look into configuring Tmux to uh, to allow us to have a little bit nicer configuration, maybe a better theme that we might enjoy. So I wanted to take some time right up front and talk about Tmux customization. And and then, can I say and then? Um, it's a thing, it's here, I know I have it. It's not on this one, where is it? I know I have and then, I must have and then. And then? There it is. Um, get back into writing and working with blazer there were there see that there goes the emote um and it's so funny to see and then emotes in other people's chat 
because they just don't they, they see and then appear they're like what the heck is that um because there are common emotes you see in a lot of folks themes that you see on folks here on twitch but and then is quite unique anyways um i, I did some some work about a week ago on my linux laptop with uh pages and user controls um for blazer uh i merged them into the main branch into the main repository take a look at that we've got some pull requests to take a look at and we're getting continued down that binary chef asking which chromebook did i get i need to put this on a panel on the screen because that is a quite common question um this is an hp chromebook 14. i got the ink blue version um there's a blog post if you go to jeffreyfritz.com um csharpfritz.com will go to the same place but it's the top blog post there and it's all about uh my purchase decisions getting the chromebook and how i got it set up the different things that i went and installed so that i could be back running with linux and net on on a chromebook which is is a bit constraining for folks and i think that's something that we as developers don't appreciate is how little network processor and memory folks that aren't developers have even folks that are developers like the 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 top the the, the top of the heap the top one percent of developers the folks that are building developer tools and things for other developers sometimes make this assumption and i say sometimes i qualified sometimes make this assumption that if you're a developer, you've got 64 gig of memory and you've got the latest i9 processor running on your MacBook Pro. That's just not the case. So, um, especially if folks want to break into this industry, they don't have those resources. And I, there was a great clip uh, that, that somebody snagged yesterday. I didn't, I don't remember who grabbed the clip. But here on the stream, we talked about gatekeeping. Don't gatekeep. Um, all right, let's get into this. Let's, I think it's interesting. I, let me show you this before I get too far here. Let me head over. These are the pages. I did some searching for Tmux customizations and I found some of these links. But when I booted up, when I booted up the, the Chromebook here, I was greeted by this screen again today. And this kind of strikes me because this is something that, um, is a real battle for for folks at Microsoft um, updating the operating system on your devices it, whether it's a phone it's a desktop it's a laptop it's a Chromebook is it can be jarring for some people right it can be disturbing Apple brags about they can deploy an operating system update for for Mac for iPhone for the watch and they'll get 90% of of their consumers um updating within a month right there, there's i I've, i don't know the exact numbers but but they brag about oh the uptake for the latest version of ios happened within uh you know it, we got everybody updated within two weeks or something crazy right thank you for the follow <clears throat> appreciate that uh is that catros uh i'm not sure how to pronounce that catrositis and and blakurko welcome in um, it's these crazy uptakes and here's the thing they deploy it and you don't even know they're installing the updates overnight you just wake up the next morning and they installed an update and people don't people complain about it for a day or two and then they shut up um, but here with with the Chromebook I'm literally getting new versions of Chrome new versions of the operating system installed every day and it's got significant new features. Place a call from my Chromebook. Print quickly and easily. Easier app management. This page will next be updated in March 2020. It is March 2020. I don't know if you know that, Google. Just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. Thank you for the follow, uh, CP Sharp. Okay, welcome in. Um, uh, Degs, that, that's an interesting comment. Let me make sure I highlight this here from, uh, from Degs. If the powerful Chromebooks weren't so expensive to have as a secondary computer, I'd get one. Uh, my, 
my crappy Samsung Chromebook is great to carry around. Um, it, it's light. It's easy to carry around. The lack of power is, is yes, definite drawback for me with, with the Chromebook. Um, at that point, why not just take an older laptop that you're not using and install Linux on it instead of having a Chromebook? And then you have full control instead of some of the constraints that Google puts on your Chromebook like you can't install fonts. And I'm going to keep hammering on that and hammering because you can't install fonts on a Chromebook. Just don't go there. You have one of those too, says Degs. Yeah, it's a great way to go. Uh, Coding Bandit says they, they prompt you to update every 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, the Apple folks do prompt you. They, they're, it is nagware on the Apple uh, and Google uh, software as well. The Chromebook just works. The updates are great. Sometimes simple is better. You, yeah, you're onto something there. I, I agree with that. Uh, the very managed operating system definitely is something here. So this is my Chromebook running here in the background. I have a, a wireless mouse plugged into it, so um, so I can continue working here. And this is just the the cheapy Logitech mouse that that was on the the stand at at my local Walmart, just around the corner from where I purchased the uh, the Chromebook. A couple bucks, five ten bucks for a mouse. Older ThinkPads seem to be popular cheap laptops, says Daryl. Code stuff. Yes. So my my normal go to Linux machine is a it's a Lenovo C something not a I don't remember um, and it works really nice as a Linux machine it completely stripped off Windows from it and and took it down to took it down to the metal and installed a uh, Debian on it and it's been terrific um, can I change that background do you mind uh, friends for a second can I change this background set wallpaper I'd like to change, no. There's a weird thing that you have to do here. Is this it? Is that the files? No. Um, let me go to files. If I go into Linux files, I have my wallpaper here. Can I change the wallpaper? Let's do that real quick. Uh, so all the Linux files, the Linux, the interaction, where you're gonna do your development on the Chromebook actually runs inside of a container. So it, when you first start this up, it uh, takes a little bit to get the subsystem up and running here. Now, interesting, it's not showing my wallpapers folder here. Uh, oh, no, it's inside here and over there. Wallpaper. Um, I'm going to set this as my wallpaper because I like that wallpaper. Huh? What do you think? That's not bad, right? Take it one step at a time. Identify the problem. There's a problem. Jackson. He's trying to. Actually, he drilled right through. Um, did I put my global git config in my dot files? I did not, Hugo. That's not a bad idea. Yes, Windows Update does prompt you. But the vast majority of people, uh, they, they really, really don't like Windows Update. If you manually uninstall the Apple update from your phone, it'll download automatically and then prompt you to install it. If you delete the update, the prompts will stop. Woo. Um, yeah, I need to put, that would be nice to put the git config in the dot files. That'd be really good too. Hmm. I like the way you're thinking. Um, let me get the terminal running. Right. Isn't there a way to put down git config here? And, Right now that I've got a wallpaper that I actually want to see, um, if I do the control shift P to jump over here, if I change that background color alpha, do I actually get to start seeing my wallpaper through it? No. Not just that, but uh, I don't know if you noticed, I just lost the color. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, where'd my custom CSS go? There, that's there. But the background color I just lost. That cool blue that we had. <clears throat> yeah, gone. It just forgot that. Right? It was it was like a midnight blue somewhere down in here. Right? There we go. Alright, we're not touching that again because it doesn't remember your settings. Bummer. Um 
Anthronolate, how is working at Microsoft? Uh, I'm in my fifth year and enjoying it. So. Yeah, the Tmux config is something I definitely want to store and be able to be able to carry around with me, right? So Tmux, Tmux is this application. That's the nice little Tmux. Um, that allows me to split my terminal, right? And what it's terminal multiplexer, I think is what it stands for. Um, and there was a hotkey. Here it is. To force that to full screen. Lee! Lee1977 just resubscribed for five months. Thank you so much for the five months of support. Yes, Tmux does rock. And uh, we'll make another uh, another donation to code.org. Mario Cesar XYZ. Hello, hello. Welcome in. Um, bot. Yeah, we are over. Oh, yes. We did get over 9,800. We need to make a... Um, we need to do a sticker giveaway. And you know what? I'm thinking that we can... Let's do that now. It happened overnight. Let's do that now. While I've got you here. And folks that come in late, well, maybe they'll learn to get in here a little bit earlier next time. Uh, turn that off. So you can see. Let's get the lash tools running here. We're going to run a giveaway. Absolutely. Thank you for the follow. Wally Wally. Appreciate you joining us. Um, we're going to give away a sticker pack. I've got a set of these all set up ready to go to the post office. I just need to get over there and I have some other things to pick up over at the post office as well. If you are, let's change this. Um, let's change this to, well, that's the wrong keyboard. Uh, now we'll do exclamation point here. Make it easy. If you're in the chat room and you'd like to, uh, you'd like to win a sticker pack, exclamation point here. We'll put your name in the box and you'll be eligible for the giveaway. There we go, there's the name starting to appear. Real easy to do, and I will ship anywhere in the world. There is no constraints. Um, all kinds of stickers, including the Super C Sharp sticker. Oh my gosh. They're way over here. See them? I've got the Rainbow Bearded Clippy. The, uh, there it is. The bot with shades. The rainbow bearded GitHub Octocats. And uh, I've got the .NET bot as well. I've got a bunch of these. We will send that out to you. It'll be in your mailbox. Couldn't get Tmux to work. Couldn't figure the shortcuts. Says K Merck. Well, we're going to we're gonna go through. We'll talk about that today. Get that ironed out so that uh, we can all be productive with Tmux. Got about 19 people in the box. Um, let's give it just a few more seconds here. I'm going to run the Jeopardy music. Shady Bots. Maxime is here. Hello, hello. You know what? Let's, uh, let's take care of this real quick. And I thought I saw, is Saduki here? Did I see her pop in? Mm, no. Yes, she is. Hey, there she is. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, let's do this. Uh... There we go. Drop a VIP on Max there. And let's do that giveaway. Let's roll. Send this out. Yeah! There we go. And let's give away a sticker pack. Let's send it anywhere in the world. We're going to send it to one of our friends. 20 folks in the, in the giveaway here. Let's see who is going to get it. And the answer is, oh man, I oh, just missed coding bandit. It's another fathead. So close. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Whisper me your. I, I literally, I have backpacks, I have hats, I have things that I need to send out over here. I want to make sure that uh, that we get that taken care of. <laughs> you know, today I've got a clear day since everybody's working from home. So, thank you so much, another fathead, for participating. And uh, we'll send you out a sticker pack here. 
At least you saw your name, says Wally Wally. Well, there you go. So, um, right. Uh, Tmux works great here. What do you mean? Yeah, I shouldn't be nested. What? Why don't I see the bottom? Why don't I see the bottom thing here? Right? I, the status bar is going at the bottom of the uh, thing. At the bottom of the doodad here. Well, how did that happen? Well, that's a problem. Right? That shouldn't be. How did, how did, how did I break it that bad already? I haven't even started configuring it yet. There it is. Very strange. So we are over 9,800, less than 190 followers to go. Tell your friends, tell your family. When this number gets to 10,000, we are going to have a 12-hour stream here live. I'm going to bring in guests. We're going to... We're going to work on all kinds of projects. We're going to play games. We're going to have a good time together. And it's going to be an opportunity to, to talk, have fun, and celebrate how far we've grown this stream in a little over two years here. It is going to be a tremendous, um, a tremendous event. So, and I've actually had, now I, I know there's a couple of you lurking out there who do work in my division. Um, there was a suggestion that we run a couple of workshops uh, and see how they go. You've seen that we run workshops on this stream. They work great. Um, I'm planning to, whether I get involved or not. Oh my gosh, Saduki! Saduki gifted Digital Drummage a subscription. Saduki gifted a tier one sub to Digital Drummage. This thank you so much. First gift sub in the channel. First gift sub, thank you very, very much. Paying forward the gift sub they got from Coding Bandit to Digi Digital Drummer J. Very cool, thank you. Um, so it, we're gonna run a workshop here. I, I want to since <laughs> since my schedule's been cleared until April, um, and this is the only uh, stream that I'm gonna be working on for the next month. Um. I think uh, we can set up and run a couple of workshops here in that time. Um, so that's something that I definitely want to get on the schedule, but I have a couple things that I need to get past first. So let me restart the bot over here. So the bot's restarted running, doing its thing, but over here, you mentioned it a few times. Raffle needs more coffee. What? What happened? What did you do? Coding with Jerry is here. Hello, hello. Yeah, the chat commands disappeared. Sorry about that. Um, let's do this. So I was... Do, 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 do. What's the best way for me to do this? I So I did some research. I want to talk about customizing Team Mux now. Um, I was doing some research. And we're, I'm going to prep and, and we'll get a workshop scheduled here in the next week or two. Um, like I said, my schedule's clear now. Oh no! Just a viewer has requested we go to Thanos voice mode for five minutes. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. You you want you want the Mad Titan? You can't handle the Mad Titan. Uh, let's do this. Where is it? I moved around my uh some of my buttons and things over here. And I need this screen up. There we go, I'm gonna move that over here. Don't snap my fingers, oh no, there'll be lots of that.
let's turn that animated music down a little bit. It's a little overwhelming, you know? There we go. <laughs> Alright. Now, where was I? Half my node packages will disappear if I... Did they go? Are they gone? Please? No, not at all. Duke Twitch wants me to destroy JavaScript. Not this time. Sorry, friend. Uh, alright. MB Crump is here. Ha! Welcome in, my friend. He's another member of the live coders. So I've wanted to customize T-Box. Oh, I don't have my indicators on. We don't know how long I need to go here. Hang on. We need to do that. Uh, turn that off. Turn this on. No, not finger. That one. There we go. Timer is in. Baby shark from the Mad Titan. Baby shark. Do, 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 do. No, it's not a good thing. No. Bad idea. So I've wanted to customize T-Mods, right? It looks plain, it looks lame here. So I went and found this uh, GitHub entry. GitHub repository, awesome T-Mods. And it looks pretty good. There's a lot of great things here. So, I wanted to go through and, and learn a little bit, configure things. Powerline, says Lee. I might not be able to use Powerline because I'm on a Chromebook and you can't install fonts. So, uh, we'll see. We'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work, I'm not going to pursue it. Um, so, there's a, a couple of articles here, and I was particularly looking at this article from him. I guess that's Vaki. Is that how you pronounce it? About making Tmux pretty and usable. Your guide to customizing Tmux. Oh my gosh, Gareth Leachman is here. Hey, Gareth. Hello, hello. Using some setup icon points. Oh. Oh, Carrie. She's clipped my baby shark singing. That's a thing. Uh oh. Um, okay. Uh, so let's take a look. So you can figure Tmux with a .tmux.conf file. So it starts the same way each time. Ham recommends Remap being the prefix key, the key you use to trigger Keymux to get into and do all the different cool features inside of Tmux, from Control B to Control A, because it's on the left side of the keyboard. Some folks use Caps Lock for this. There is no caps lock on the Chromebook. So, can't do that. And you go clipped, baby shark, also. Uh oh. <sighs> Alright. Folks take me seriously here. Right? They do? I hope. For at least the next two minutes, you should. Okay. So, this isn't too bad an idea to read. Uh, do this remapping. So let me do that uh, over here. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, I'm in my my directory. Uh, yeah. So I want a tmux conf, right? And I'm going to start to copy in these in those directions. Um, no string under cursor. What? Uh, remap the prefix keystroke. 
and I'm, I'm using two screens now, so I'm looking down at my Chromebook, and I have the instructions up here in front of me, so I can copy that in. Um, I'm going to unbind, control B, set option, dash G, prefix, so now it's control A, uh, bind, key, not key, key. A for send prefix. Okay. So I need to rerun that, right? So uh, is that just source tmux conf? Or not? That didn't work. What if I just do this? So now is it control A and then. Yep, control A works now. Cool. Alright. So I've got that working, right? That's a thing. There's a reload command in Tmux. Didn't know that. Uh-oh. DJ Vortex. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Look at this. The timer ran up. But he wants me to go to a different voice. A sillier voice. Friends, it, it doesn't get any weirder than this. You know, let's do it. Here we go. As request. Oh, yes. No, I'm not going to do the hamster dance. That's not a thing. No, 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 no. Alright. Five minutes on the clock. You're on Vortex! Here we go. I need closed captioning for this one? Yes, you can turn it on. It is there, it is active, it, it does work and it's nice. You love the hamster dance? That's a thing. Baby shark now? No. Uh-uh, not happening. Sorry, friend. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 bind R. 
to sourcefile at dot tmarks.crunch. Okay, that should work, right? Sourcefile. Well, that didn't work. Hmm. Uh, control A. Well, that's not working either. Uh oh. Control A colon ah. Source dash file. Tmux conf. Now did that do a thing? Uh, control A R. Uh, maybe it did something. I don't know. Maybe. It could have been a thing. Definitely could have been a thing. Oh yeah, we're all squirreled. Ian Ring, this is hamster voice. See, right there. <laughs> what? Uh, what about Didi and Gomez? Oh, I've I've used um face rig with them. Oh boy, that went over so well. <laughs> Wasn't that building control A to control capital A? Was it capital? No. No, 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 no. We're good. Right? We're good. That's the right one. We're all right there. Um, the other comment, somebody said, uh, we should put, we should link these. Put, do symbolic links into my dot files repository, which is down here. So let's copy, um, um, let me exit, so I'm outside it, Tmux, um, let's see, um, uh, with Tmux conf, oh gosh, we're done with hamster mode, right, um, uh, Tmux conf to dot Tmux conf, right? So now I should have it here. There it is. Right there. Good. So now when I run Tmax, I should have my configuration. Right? Uh, like that. Cool. That worked. Right? Um, so I'm happy with this, but I'm, I'm done with hamster voice. <sighs> Fun. And we're back. What's stuck? Nothing's stuck. There is no stuck. We're back and running. Back where we need to be here. Uh, let me turn off the redemption indicators here. This, that, and that. And I need to combine some of these buttons, let me tell you. Right? Right? And, and all these abbreviations that we're keying in here, it makes me feel like, well, it makes me so feel like... How the VP is such a VIP. Shouldn't we keep the PC on the QT? Because if it leaks to the VC, you can end up in MIA, and then we'd all be put on KP. That's what I feel like when, when I deal with some of these Linux abbreviations. Kind of confusing, right? You know what I mean? What's that? It's kind of confusing, okay? You have to ask me nicely. Well, they did with channel points. So we, we use those, okay? Let me put red back on here. Ah, there we go. Do the same with a Tmux directory. A Tmux directory. No more request for voices, says Maxime. It's weird. Oh, really? I can make it weirder. There are plenty more voices where those came from. I don't make them all available to you. But there are plenty more voices where those came from. Ha ha ha! Come here, maximize. Oh yes, plenty more voices where those came from. Okay, don't test me. <laughs> All right. So I got right. I've got the scene split commands. They're working. Easy config reloads. There's this one about um, fast pain switching. Um, switch panes using the alt arrow without prefix. So instead of having to do alt A and left and right, just be able to say alt left and right and have it bounce around through those. Uh, 
So I think uh, I think I want to drop that in, and I, I that might be the last one of these mouse selecting. I'm not worried about those. Renaming windows automatically. Um, I don't know what that is, but changing the look. There's some theming here. I have some other theming websites that I was looking at that we'll go to, but um, this one right here. Um, I want to wire this up real quick and we'll talk about themes and some of those changes in a minute um, because I'm always m accidentally moving the pane left and right here so um, let me log out to get rid of that pane now, I thought there was a keystroke to close panes as well I don't remember what that is coding bandit with voice modulation built in that's a good idea <laughs> oh, that would be a fun idea. Let me put this into the mix here. Uh, Vim on that. Oh, wait a sec. That didn't work because I didn't... All right. Um, let me go down here now. And let's make this uh, switch panes with alt arrow. Okay. And we're going to say bind dash in m dash left select uh, dash pane dash l so that's binding the meta key that's the alt key on this keyboard uh with the left arrow to select the pane to the left and i'm going to do the the same thing here with the others m dash right to select pane dash r um and i'm i'm of course putting this it this is updated in, in my dot files repository we'll update it on github so if you want to get a copy of my tmux config or you want to suggest an update uh you'll be able to send a pull request you'll be able to reach right into my my github that didn't sound right reach into my github you'll be able to go out there take a look and and send a pull request if you'd like to um suggest an update to show me a new feature or uh troll me whatever you know um select pain uh dash d all right there's a couple comments over here oh thank you hugo for linking to that you could tweet things for the mask tweet things for the mask to say what don't do that that's a bad idea we could bind something to the kill pain command um i i like the sound of that right um right because if i do uh that is it is it control a kill pain ah so we could do that let's bind something to kill pain and it's called advil i like the idea of that what would be a good kill pain keystroke k is k a thing can we do that alt k and have it kill the pain that would be nice, right? Control W. Oh, Control W, of course, because that's what you use in in your browser, in uh, Visual Studio Code, other places like that. Um, okay, so so let's open up a line. Um, kill pain with uh, Control W. Um, so I'm not gonna. It's uh, so if we say bind W right uh kill paint does that work i need to exit and reload here because of how i didn't have that okay uh so now i'll split it so now if i do control a w that didn't work yeah that's not working hmm you move over here thank you for the follow live coding Who's live coding? Welcome in. Um, uh, Shinji, uh, Shinji Kari Chess, welcome in. Uh, yeah, control A, R, didn't work. Um, and if I do alt left, it does move over. Um, and if I do control A, W, oh, I held down control for the second a key of that. Well, that works now, that's nice, right? Uh, so I can still move these around with the arrow keys to resize. Now, I wanted to figure out, isn't there a way to save the orientation of this? And also, 
isn't there a way to shrink the font size on one? Is there a way to shrink the font size on one side of the panel versus the other? Or is that something that's only in Windows Terminal? It is I, Live Coding. Well, oh, okay, welcome in, Live Coding. I haven't met you before. It's nice to meet you. Mm. Lee, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. Thank you for putting that up. Um, to bind source file, display message, config reload it. That's a really good idea. Uh, let me do that. Um, so let's vim back into our tmux config. And where was it? Source file down here on line 13. Um, so at the end of this, do a uh, slash semi. Uh, right, display message. Right, config. Uh, this is just for me, right? That's a great idea. Thank you. That's a That was a really good suggestion. And now it says it down there. Nice! Cool, that was easy. Thank you. That's a, that was a nice tip there, Lee. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so now if I just bounce over here, what I'd like to do is go down into dev.files. And the git prompt that I have here gets really long. Right? Um, see, look, and... Yes. Right? Just do an ls. Um, if I want to see the hidden files, isn't it ls-l? Is that hidden? No. That's the long format. Um, no. I guess it's ls-a. There we go. Um, and git status will show me. We modified vimrc. I modified vimrc. Um, what did I do in vimrc? Oh, I added the omnisharp configuration. Yeah, let's... Uh, let me commit that first. Um, uh, forced um, OmniSharp into uh, standard I.O. mode. Okay. And now let me add Tmux. Commit that. So these are separate. So you can see clearly what happened. Uh, adding Tmux config. We're going to be doing more here with this. Trust me. I'll push those changes out. What? Why did that just happen? Hey, Frank Boucheros is here. Um, why did that just happen? Uh, right? Um, did, did it just reset all my git configuration stuff? No, I didn't clone over HTTP. Uh, git config, thank you, dash dash global dash L. It's there. Is it over here? Somehow I'm in the wrong place. Nope, it knows who I am over here. Is my .ssh folder here? Yep, that's there. And it's got my key. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Right, if I git push... Why is it asking for my username? Right? Um, I'll see it. It's doing this weird uh, indenting here. Make sure my remote is pointing. That's why I was just about to check. Was the remote? It is pointing to HTTPS. Rats. Which then has me wondering. Nope, that's on SSH. 
no big deal. I mean, we can change the... We can change it real quick. Um, which is... Right, it's going to be git at github.com. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to navigate to it. So I can copy it. Um, github.com, c -sharp -fritz files. It's weird that it was on SSH. Right? Uh, because I always have it on SSL over here. Hmm. Um, so can I, what, what can I do with Git remote if I want to change it? Um, can I update it? Rename, remove, set URL. Well, that wasn't, I wasn't expecting that to just completely go away. Let me do that again because I can leave that up on this side. Go over here and I can say git remote set URL, right? Um, name, uh, the name is origin. New URL is this. So now if I do git push, there we go. Fantastic. All right. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, git config dash e. What does git config dash e do? Oh, Oma. So we can edit it directly right here. Nice. Don't need that right there. Oh my. Right? Hugo, what was it you were saying about putting a dot git config in the in my dot files folder? Isn't there something there? Hey, Gareth, good to see you. Gareth, and who else did I see drop, drop by earlier? And Frank, they're both members of the Live Coders team as well. Um, right? Isn't there a way I can keep a git config locally? So I can just push that around, and when I clone into other locations, I've got it. Um, Motown Andy, hello, hello. Right, git config... If I want one repo to have a, a different identity. Um, I wouldn't keep it local in the repo, but I would copy it into right into my uh, into my user folder. You do that for your work git. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There should be a... Uh, right? Is there a dot git config here? Uh, I don't see one. Oh, maybe there is. Okay. So let me copy that into... I'm just going to move it directly into my... Uh, here, why am I doing this this way? I want to be able to look at this. That's better. Um, move that into dev... Dot files so that my identity is there. Um, you won't be able to do anything with this unless you have my SSH keys. Um, but now I'll lnsh uh, git config uh, dev dot file. So I'm creating a symbolic link, right, to connect that file that I just wrote back to its proper location here. And now I can see that it is referenced and using the content that's over in the repository. So if I go over here, let's see, I have one extra file there. Yep, add that, commit it, added, git config, git push, now that's available, okay. Um, so now I've got my git config available. I, I didn't mess up words, I got the words. Eternal Dev Coder asks, how's the Chromebook coming along? Um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit more customization here and then we're gonna roll back over and do some .NET development. I've, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with this. It's a little bit slow with some of the compiled tasks, but I think we're finding ways to make it run faster by eliminating some of the extra things. Not a problem, Gareth. Have fun with those. Gareth's done a tremendous job helping out with the Blazor uh, components project that we've been working on. Tremendous job. That's why you see his name a lot across the top there. Uh, there you go. Top for the month. Seven contributions for Gareth. Right there in in the middle, and folks that contribute, your name will appear up on the top as well. Just like Hisham and Eagle Hansen, Kabazi, you see them up there, Code DJ, all contributing to the project. You, I want to salute you, I want to thank you 
put your name up there on top of the of the uh the thing. The crawl there. Zeb code. Zeb code just resubscribed for three months. Thank you so much. That'll put you into a red hat loyalty badge. Thank you very much for that support. And we will make a donation to code.org. Copper beard asks. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put that up on the screen? <laughs> and if if Max is still here, yeah, he is. Um, so let me let me show this. Um, there we go. Um, I was uh, uh, our friend Max uh, very very graciously posted uh, a link to my blog post about .dot net on a Chromebook here to Reddit, and. Rightfully so, he writes, just full full disclosure, Jeff's a PM on the .NET team and showing how you can get into this. And the first comment is, that isn't one of our folks is, I'm pretty sure he's heavily confusing .NET Framework and .NET Core. Clearly. Clearly I'm missing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I, what do I know? I don't know the difference between the two, clearly. Uh, there's a question there about um, a public page for the components, for the Blazor Web Form components. Yes, you can get to those, I believe it is. Yep, Blazor Web Form components, azurewebsites.net. Uh, why didn't that paste? There you go. And that'll get you. I should put a link to that at the top of the uh, at the top of the GitHub repository. That's not a bad idea. Uh, you want me to explain the difference and you can clip it and add it to the video as a response. Add the video as a response. Gareth, that's a really good idea. But should I do it with this voice or should I do it with the storyteller voice? <laughs> Oh, that would be terrible. It would be great, but so terrible. <laughs> uh, they can only run classic ASP in Apache. Oh, that's right. Storytelling mode. With authority with the hamster voice. Oh, dear. <laughs> do, do you mind, friends, do you mind me taking a minute here and explaining the difference between the two? With a fun voice. This is... Why do, what, it, sir, I can... I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. Come on. No. Auto tune it. No. So dot net framework. No. 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 But this feels like the right one to tell you all about dot net framework. Gather round, children, as I tell you the story all about .NET. There it is, .NET. Free, cross-platform, and open source. .NET Framework has been around since 2001. Runs on Windows, builds WPF, Windows Forms, and ASP.NET applications. It's great. It's still supported, runs with Windows, deploys with Windows, and you've got support through at least 2029. There's also Xamarin, which will let you build apps for Mac, iOS, Android, and a bunch of different gaming systems. You can run Mono, and that'll run and allow you to build with Unity, and even run apps natively in the browser using WebAssembly. Or you can use .NET Core. .NET Core is the new framework, the new .NET technology that allows you to build with a completely open source framework that'll run on 
Windows, Mac, and Linux. And it comes in containers. And you can run it in the browser. And you can run it on a Chromebook like I am. .NET Core is really great for at version 3.1. It was initially released about five years ago, and it's still growing. It's still evolving. It's still changing. You're going to be able to do really great things with it. You can build Windows applications with it, not just web applications, but Windows applications for WinForms and WPF using .NET Core. Finally, the next version of .NET or is actually being rebranded. It's the Highlander of .NETs. There shall be only one, and it'll be .NET 5. Mobile applications, Windows applications, web applications, native applications that run in the browser, all coming with .NET 5. So there you go. There's the quick rundown on all the .NETs. There's been a bunch of them. It's a little confusing, but it's all going to be crystal clear when .NET 5 comes out this fall 2020. All right, how's that? Did you clip that? Do you like this? Was that a good thing? Huh? Huh? How do we do? It's very fast. It's too fast. We need to go back and re-record. We need to go back and re-record, Jeff. You didn't. It was too much. We need to re-record. I didn't say which. .NET Core 5 or .NET from... Shut up, Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did we cover that? This man is the only person that I've met that actually can describe what .NET is. That's right, Wookie Slayer. I can that's why they pay me the big bucks, is because I explain it. Me and a bunch of other folks named, um, you know, you know what they're named. They're, um, Scott! see, it's a bit too long for a single clip. You can do a highlight. You can, instead of creating a clip, you can create a highlight and you can create that a little bit longer. Yeah, you know, Scott! see, Scott, him, Scott! right, there he is. You didn't listen. Can I do that again? Sure, Dukasoft. Hang on one second. Let me just read what. <laughs> um, here we go. Let's get into this. Let's get back into this. I want to go over the last config thing that I wanted to do here with my... Um... Yeah, I should put this... I'm going to save this website. Make sure that we come back to this. Because I'd really like to put that into the, uh, into the GitHub repository as a link near the top of the readme so that folks can easily click through and see what we've built so far. No, he's so bad. He's good. He is bad, and it's good. I need to adjust the, the um, compression on that. I need to make the gain on that recording of Natasha just a little bit louder because you can't hear it over the music. We'll fix it. We will get that fixed. Um, so team, this is an article about running Tmux with Vim and getting some cool features with this. Um, being able to run things from VI and get it to pop into another uh, panel. I'm, I'm not sold on that. This is an article that was linked about customizing Tmux, about setting the status on the left or the right and putting different content in there. Um, and folks have built some plugins that you can use to configure that. Um, and here's another page that has references, the 10 most important commands. Um, but it's very Mac focused. So, doesn't exactly work for me. This was the article we were using. Let me share this article for customizing Tmux. There you go. Um, so I can close that now. Um, this this is what I was looking at and saying, oh, I need to replace what I'm doing with Tmux with this because um, over here, right, when I've got that git command line here that shows, well, here's what the current repository is, it gets really, really long, right? And it wraps around, and I've got all this just open space down here in this ugly green status bar. So I'd really like to move this off of my status and put it down here so I can go back to the shorter 
and, and even then, I, I'd like taking my name off there. So it's just the, uh, so my prompt is just the folder that I'm in, the present working directory. What do you think, uh, chat room? Does that sound, sound reasonable? Like a move in the right direction here and call it there. Do those last two modifications and wrap up. So, uh, let me jump back over to, let me see this, and it was here. So this is git mux, and it'll put down here on the bar, the branch, all the same things that I had on the, uh, what's it called? On the thing, you know, it'll, the, uh, the branch, whether or not, how it compared to the origin. Um, so there's a, there's a binary release of this. There's a source. I don't want to compile anything. Just do it. Just run. Git mux output can be customized via configuration file in YAML format. Now I'm okay with that. That's clearly a configuration file. You're not programming with it, with YAML. So I'm okay with that. Instead of the prompt, thank you, Lee. Ugh. Words are hard. Um, modify the line in tmux conf passing the path of the configuration file as an argument to git mux. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So download it and decompress it. Decompress it where? Right? Um, so, oh my gosh. So I need to go get this, right? I don't. It doesn't tell me where to put it. It just says decompress it. Um. So decompress into dot tmux plugins. All right. Um. So let me grab that's GitHub Arl Git Mux. Let me go to that location um, over here, right? Go back over to my browser here, open a new tab, GitHub, uh, Arl, Gitmux, right? That was it. There we go. Um, okay. Scroll down here, Gitmux, yes. Easy, well, all right. Um, I'm going to download the latest binary, hold down control and click so I get it in a new, uh, here we go. Um, I am AMD 64, but I'm not FreeBSD, Linux. Uh, show in folder. There it is. And we're going to move that over here to my Linux files so that I can see it inside my terminal. Right. There it is. Okay. So you're saying to put this into .tmux slash plugins. Um, do I have a tmux fold? Uh, do I have a dot t dot .tmux? No. So we need to make that. Okay. Um, dot .tmux. And we want to make a plugins folder. Right. Um, and I'm going to decompress uh, this. Oops. that here not found in archive so there's git mux oh, I tab you're supposed to um, I guess that's just a binary sitting there hmm. do I remember when setup exe was a thing yeah right You did a presentation some years ago where you could code on a Windows phone. You were using Monaco, yeah. Monaco became Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio Code Online is where that kind of grew. So I've got this downloaded. It's it's saved into that folder. Um, add this line to your tmux conf. Set dash G status right git mux. All right, so let's just copy this. Do, 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 copy that back over here. Um, not BIM. 
Uh, yeah. There we go. Go to the end. And uh, let's put git status here. Git mux. Uh, git status on the status bar. Right. And we're going to paste in that comment. I hope that works. Um, so now I should be able to just reload. Config reloaded, it says. And there's, there's nothing right here. But if I go over here, it doesn't have anything there either. Um, that didn't do anything. Hmm. You have a git repo with this. You've been thinking it was a bash power cell script to create symbolic links to the correct location and link that. Um, is this to, just to put git info into the prompt? Yes. It is, uh, ugg squish. Yes, it is. And it's, well, I've already got it on the prompt. I want to get it on the status bar down here. And it doesn't look like it works. Hey, Lithix. No, I'm not going to do ZSH. No. Um, so why isn't that doing anything? Um, does it not know to load that plugin? Does it not know that where Gitmux is to run it? Uh, where do I place Gitmux? Uh, no, no, no. Well, that's not going to work. Okay. Issues. Does anybody have an issue here? Consider possibly choose to remove... Not working. Uh, it's possible the session was started and doesn't add plugins till it starts a new session. Very good point. That could be a thing. Um, okay. So if I go down into dev uh, dot files, no, nothing over here. Um, right, it's Linux AMD 64. Yeah, I'm on AMD. Wait a sec. Yeah, this is AMD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which get mux and figure out. Well, that didn't work. Nope. It doesn't see it. right there did I make it executable didn't think I it's already executable tmux source file and if I go back to there nope not working you're also setting up Team Mux right now. It says M to the M1337. It's an executable, not a true plugin. Yeah. Uh, do I happen to know how to enable scrolling the buffer? No clue. I mean, I can do it, but it kind of screws up Team Mux. That file needs to be in a folder in the path. So I need to add my. Oh dear. Um, so I need to add that to my path. Put it into bin or user bin. Um, okay. So let's do this. Uh, da -da -da. No. Uh, plugins, uh, git mux, put that into user bin. Fine. Teach you. Uh, team, uh, wait, that's not going to be in the right place. Um, 
sudo mv dot tmux plugins git mux to user bin. Okay. Uh -huh. So that says it reloaded. So let me go back into dev dot files. Still nothing. Does VS Code work on a Chromebook? Sure does. It's got to start up. But once it started, there it is. See? That works. And you can do all kinds of stuff with VS Code there. But I want to work at the command line. Uh, when we do which git mux what do we get now now we got it let's exit and restart just in case it's a problem with getting that plugin loaded uh, dev dot files nothing you can host VS code as a web server if you want yeah you can do that you just don't get the vim keys um, it takes some practice What's this? Um, macro key and... Oh yeah, and you can wander around. Neat. How do I get back to normal? Help! Um, okay. So... Oh, there it is! It just took a minute. It finally appeared. The, the colors look like... They don't look great. Um, but I want to fix that next. Let's let's get through and fix that. Um, practice. Yeah, they take a little bit of practice. Vim Tutor's a good, good place. M to the M1337 is right. Um, okay, so the next thing... Let me change back over here. I wanted to take a look at... Uh, not the. I don't want to look at the CPU theme, but I want to look at this theme pack, which is a Git clone into Tmux theme pack. So I'm. Um, so two things that. Uh, well, actually, hang on. Hmm. And then we need to set this up. So let me do this Git clone. This is uh, Jim E H Tmux dash theme pack. I'm going to open that over here. Thank you for the follow. M to the M1337. Um, let me get to the right place over here. So we're on the right. Looking at the right place. Tmux theme pack. And I'll get all these things into my script file so I can reconfigure when I'm ready uh, later. All right. So I can minimize this and I'm over here. So now um, this is this is the Chromebook, and what I'd really like, I would love to do this Powerline blue theme right here. That looks really really nice. Don't need HJKL, just use the arrow keys. They work. They work in every operating system that I've worked with Vim on. Um, so I'm going to install manually, which means I need to add this. So let's do this Git clone, and I'll add this if we get it working, into our, uh, I'll add this into our, uh, into my setup scripts in my dot .files repository. So that's cloned down. So now we need to add this into the tmux conf. And I don't want the green tmux theme. I want cyan, powerline cyan, because I love, I, I'm, a, I'm a blue fan, what can I tell you? Um, so vim tilde tmux uh, dot conf okay so let me go to the not the end of that one go to the end of the file right um, themes right paste that in um, and not green I wanted cyan uh, what are you doing no! <laughs> no, 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 no. 
it's like the cursor is in the wrong place. Right? See, look at that. Hmm. Um, and I want cyan. There we go. Save that, and let's try and re... Uh-oh. Uh, I don't think that worked. Um, try this. One more. That didn't work. Uh, okay. There was something it was saying about... Well, sometimes it doesn't like... Uh, right? Um, on some level, you might have to remove the quotes marks from the source file command to avoid a no such file or directory error. Sounds like it. So let me try removing those quotes. Uh, down there on line 28. Right? And uh, if I go to the end of the line... See, it says it's the end of the line, but I'm, I'm clearly not with where that is. So that... I, I worry about that cursor placement. That's going to be weird. Um, Alright, let's see if... Nope, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Um, okay. So that theme pack doesn't. Yeah, it's the terminal. It's you're right. It's borking the cursor. It's a great way to put it. Um, hmm. All right. Um, if this theme, if this theme pack isn't working, right? That was. Cyan I was trying to run. There's also ones that aren't power line, right? These block ones. So if I say, uh, well, that's power line block blue. Power line block cyan. I'm guessing I'm going to run into something similar here. Double. Both the left and far right sides are colored rather than just the left side. Power line double. I thought there were some non ones here. Nope. Bummer! We're not going to be able to change that theme, but there's a way to change this. Will I be looking at GVim? No, 100% command line when I'm working with Vim. Um, so that's not... Right. Uh, Teamux themes. There's a way to color. I want to change the background of that status bar, and I want to be able to put some other things onto it, too. Uh, there's my awesome Teamux list. Uh, no coding. No, no, we're going to get to it, Confession, I promise. Um, themes, there they are. Uh, practical guide to customizing. Mm, now it's this again. It's already there. All right, you know what, for now, I guess this will work. Um, let me get rid of that theme stuff because it didn't work. Uh, get rid of this line, that line. Thank you for the follow. Large data bank. Welcome in. Yeah, fell into a rabbit hole. Yeah, I'll be including some of these links, the ones that I added here, because um, there's there's definitely some value here. Git mux I definitely want. Um, where was it? The themes were in tmux theme pack. So let me remove that. Because that, that didn't work for us. Um, but let me go back into dev dot files. There we go. Right. Updates to the tmux conf. And it's just the git status on the right status bar. So we do need to still put something in to fetch that status. And I'll update my, what's it called? I'll update my prompt later and see if we can get this color fixed for next time. Um, so let's do this. Added... Uh, git mux to tmux and we'll push that space cat is hosting us thank you developers 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 absolutely I feel like I also want to have I don't need the time here because I'm getting the time from um, you know from uh, chrome os here so I don't really need that I would like to have the date there somewhere we can figure that out next time we do a little bit more configuration. Um, 
Okay, let me go into our Blazor project. So here's where we're working with our scripts and trying to get a little bit more productive here. You turn off the status bar, you don't feel a reason to use it, says M to the M1337. Um, to each their own. Right? And that's that's kind of the beauty of of Linux and, and the tools that we're choosing to use here is it is all about choice. If you like this, turn it on. If you don't like it, turn it off. That's great. Um, but I, I wanted to move this here so I could turn it off inside my my prompt, make my prompt a little bit shorter. And we'll figure that out next time. Um, <laughs> let me see. Let's do... Oh, I don't need the time because I... Well, we'll figure that out. Um, where were we? Let's take a look and see if there were any pull requests that we need to merge, we need to deal with here. Um, because I, I think there is. And I'll show you the merge that I did yesterday. Uh, so we're on github.com, Fritz and Friends, Blazor Web Forms Components. These are the components that we've been working on that work in Blazor that emulate web forms, ASP.NET web forms, so that you can build and, and hopefully migrate your applications into Blazor from web forms with a lower on-ramp. We want to make it easier for you to do that. Um, Hisham was working on this, the component ID generator. I don't think there were any updates here since I last... Um, yeah, no additional changes. That's fine. We'll back out of this. Um, I did push into our... We were working in a, a branch over here a few days ago called Spike User Control. Where we're doing a spike, a little bit of research and development, to see what's it like if we build a user control, a base user control, or a base page component that we could then inherit from. And if you look at the commits on this, I've added some things in here. Um, and, right, we, we put our T4 template in here so we can generate some of the, um, some of the, JavaScript that we need in order to interact with the entire DOM. Um, I added some entries into the documentation about this. Um, that was the big thing that I did, was I added documentation. Um, yeah, and got rid of some of the generated documentation that was out there. Made it a little bit easier. So, um, and I fully expect to squash this before I merge. Control, uh, you can do a prefix W to display all sessions, windows, and panes. Um, you can. Well, now that I made W close, it doesn't do that. Right, control A, W. No, I can't get that to pop now. That's a great thing about Linux, being able to set up exactly how you want it. Yep. Yep, yep. So let me um let's do this. Capital W. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do, and it's not popping anything. Nothing shows here. Um that's okay. I'm not gonna get wrapped up in that right now. Um if we take a look at what I've put into this. Right, I wrote a couple of, uh, it's not showing me where the other branches are. Where it jumped off. Um, I But I added a bunch of scripts to try and make it easier here um, for folks to be able to work with this. And I, the other thing I would love to do is save the state of these panes so that I could jump right back to them at the right size. Um, so if I go back over here and I go to scripts, see it, my cursor is all messed up now. Um, right, and we do watch test. It should now start building and watching my tests. And there we go. That's fine. I'm going to jump back over to this panel. So we can do... Yeah, the line isn't straight. What terminal is this? This is the terminal that, that's made available... Uh, for Chrome OS. So it's quite wonky. Yes. There's definitely things that need to be fixed here. So, and you can see I'm on the feature productivity branch. Nice. Nice. I like seeing that. Um, 
So let's do this over here. Um, I feel like this is where I feel like this is in a place where I could merge it into dev, and you have some productivity helpers with that. Um, let me do that. I'm just gonna I'm gonna merge and kill this branch. Um, because it it is just a series of scripts that we've added. We haven't really added features per se. Um, so I'm going to go down here to feature productivity. Here we go. Six commits. Yeah, see. Attempting to limit output to the console. That's where we stopped trying to do this test console so that we would say, oh, don't output things. Um, which, for some reason, still isn't working. Let's create the pull request. Um, scripts and projects to make uh, Linux-based dev easier. And it feels kind of weird that I have to create this type of thing. Um, did I try to use system diagnostics debug? Uh, no. I don't know if it would actually output. Let's take a look at that real quick. Right? So that was actually, so we were specifically looking at where you do the console write line inside of your your tests, um, Gareth. Right, see how it's all wonky over there and why I want to shrink the command line? Um, so if I go to, it was list view, particularly it was some, one of the places. And if we do vim on uh, grouping, let's just do the first one here. And we go down here. Right, if we get rid of this, right, and we make this system diagnostics debug. See, I'm not going to know if that actually worked. Reset that. Um, I had started moving things into this test console. It's edit that. So instead of doing any of this, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, system diagnostics debug right line text. Um, I should have put return. So it doesn't even attempt to do the stuff below it. So now it's going to try and recompile right here. Come on. Here we go. Really need a more powerful terminal emulator in the Chromebook. Agree, Degs. Oh, yes, yes. Not possible for Tmux to use different font sizes in the pane. Rats. You try it on your machine, you don't get all that output. Hmm. Maybe the project file needs a debug section. Could be. So I want to try and make sure that all that HTML that was being written out to the console goes away. I have a feeling it's still going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So outputting all that stuff really pushes the total time out further. And we're trying to simplify and make that a little bit faster. Uh, you can tile multiple Tmux section sessions that have different font sizes for those, but not in one terminal. Ah. Zeb code says, just get a Windows Surface book. Oh, Zeb. No. Um... Yeah, if there's a way to simplify and get rid of all this extra, it's going to make it easier. Debug right line if. And set your condition. Uh, if I like staying on the command line on this machine, uh, we could try the brand new GitHub CLI to create pull requests. Why? I want to be visual here. Uh, um... So, debug, right line, uh-oh. Storyteller for five minutes. Um, we can do that. Sure. 
sure. Uh, let me just head over here. Oops. Right. Um, and where's the condition go here? <laughs> Coding Bandit! Cool. Thank you so much for the cheer. 142 bits. Appreciate that. We'll make another donation to code.org. Um, I forget what the syntax of this is supposed to be. You're not going to give me that, are you? Are you? Nope. Oh, OmniSharp, where did you go? Uh, nope, that didn't work either. I'm not sure it's supposed to pop when I say Control X O. His ribs raided my stream with six viewers. Oh my goodness! Thank you so much for the raid. How's it going out there? Um, it's good to see you. Welcome on in there, friends. My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome in, raiders. And um, you're about to catch me as I'm about to do a voice mod here. Um, let's start the voice mod while I welcome in the raiders. Let's do that. Thank you so much for the follows. We're going to get right into this. That's right. Here we go. Yes. Welcome in, raiders. Let's put the status up so you know we're in. This is a channel points redemption for storyteller mode. There we go. Five minutes. We do redemption so that folks can change my voice. Ask me to change my hat. All kinds of different things here on the channel. While we're writing code, we're configuring, we're building different things here on stream, and we're into storyteller mode. Yeah. So welcome in. How's it going? What were you working on over there on your channel? You've literally only done GHPR create, a GitHub pull request create. Very cool. Neo Ashy, yes, we're writing code. What would that happen if someone redeemed the font change now? We can't do it. Can't do it. Font changes can't be done in Chrome OS. That's not a thing. Watching a rerun of the Emergent Gamer Podcast. Nice! Congratulations. That sounds like fun. Musical Bookworm asks, for minimal march, have a challenge that can't easily be met. Let me put that challenge up here on the screen so we can talk about this. C Sharp Development on an Android device. Actually, Gareth is doing that. There are a lot of people who don't have access to any computer to learn coding, but do have a smartphone. Yep, Gareth, Gareth Hobble. You see him right there in the chat room. He's doing it on his stream right now. Um, you can develop on anything except an iPad says live coding. Wrong. Visual Studio Online lets you do that. You can open up an editor in your browser on your iPad with a keyboard and you can do your thing. So, yes, it can be done. <laughs> uh, use a phone tablet as a gateway to things like Visual Studio Online glitch. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, oh yes. Uh, so, looking back here, I have what's called Omni, Omni Sharp install and it should it's not giving me completion here and I don't get it right uh, now that should trigger a rebuild over here so the right side of the screen this is my tests running over there on the left side that's code that I'm writing to do some 
the, the code that I'm writing. I'm trying to conditionally output some information, and it's it's not building properly here. I'm I'm getting an error. I need a little bit more information as to why. So let me kick off a build command here so I can see. Well, no wait. Hang on. Um, if I go over here. And can I go back up? Ah, oh, there it is. No overloan for right line if takes one argument. Yes, I know. Where does the argument go? Um, here. This is epic. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Quite epic. I can't remember if it goes before or after. Uh, uh, right line if. What's the syntax of that? Do, 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 do. Here. Um, come on. Come on. Uh, the Boolean is up first. My condition is first. Uh, so let's say. But that's not right. That's not right. Um, oh no. Where did it? Wait. What? No. Over here. Undo. Undo. No. No, undo. Lots of undos. Alright, false. That that didn't work either. Right, look at where my cursor is. Right, that's Yeah. Okay, so that looks right. Write that out. And now we should rebuild over here. Yeah. Okay. Visual Studio Online Pricing would likely put it out of reach for someone who only owns a smartphone and can't afford a computer. Musical Bookworm, I kind of agree with you. It's not something everybody's going to be able to use all the time. Um, thank you so much for the redemption. Let me clear this out. Da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Here, here we go. And we're back. Yay! Uh, let me see here. There we go. All right. Um, so back in here, that that ran properly. That ran properly. So if I get my condition, if I check this environment variable. If there is no environment name or the environment name isn't called production, let me change it so it's development because right now I don't have any environment var environment name. If it's not one of those, well, let's let's actually uh, output. That way it's clear and easy to turn this on and off, right? So we can definitely do that. Um, so I'm going, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to grab this line, right? I'm going to, uh, mm, I'm going to grab these two lines. No, let me grab, can I just move this up? What is it to, right? Um, move to the beginning of the line. Right, I want to, I want to yank it. Right? Uh, why? D no. Uh, I forget the command. But I can put like that. Yeah, there we go. And I can yank this line. I wanted to do a cut. But whatever. Um, so let's get rid of that if. And let's say... Uh, uh, has... No. Um... Yeah, has target environment equals that. And I'll change. No, I'm not in insert. See, that, oh man, that cursor location really is screwing me up here. Uh, right. No! Where did my... I, I, I'm trying to hit a... 
did it. Mm. See, wh why am I in X? See, ah! Okay, I want to go to that uh, that false statement here. Get rid of that, and I want to insert has. I didn't want that. Has target uh, environment, right? And get rid of these three lines down here. Oh, come on. There we go. Now, that should recompile and still continue to run, right? That should be a thing. I know it feels like I've forgotten how to type, but I'm it's it's this cursor is all wackadoodle. Uh expect is semicolon expected. What? I'm oh shoot. Um here, the end of this line should have a semi. There we go. Why not save that off into a static so you don't have to reach into the environment every call? Great point, Hugo. Yes. Um Good point. Let's uh, let's do that. Can um, get, grab this, right? Put it. Oh, come on, man! Really? Put it. There we go. Um, so if we make this private static. So that should get it initially, as it's declared. Uh, I don't know why it hopped. Get rid of that. Okay. Yank this. Put that here, right? Get rid of this. Make this private static. That should work, right? Get rid of this. That should be a thing. Yeah, it's a cold day in Philly. It's actually not that cold here. Oh, I'm out of coffee. Hmm. Yeah! Invalid token. Oh, no. Oh, look at that. It... Hmm. It, it copied in this. Oh, dear. Uh, there we go. Right, that should be like this. But it doesn't... Why doesn't it like that? because I'm in fear of code. I need to type on has target. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, let me see, move this over here. Uh, okay. Do that. Because it was a var earlier, so it was adapting and taking whatever it is. Thank you. Um, it, but it, right, the, the cursor interaction there feels really clumsy. I'm not sure where it is that I'm running it. Is it Fira code that's giving me this problem? The font override that I've chosen. I didn't feel like we had this problem yesterday when we were using it, but it feels like we're, we're stuck on it today. So there we go. Test execution and... There we go. 11.59 seconds. It's better? Not great, but better? Right? Um, let me go back over. Let's do this. Let me, let me reset the font size, the font. Just to see if this is it. Uh, 
Uh, no. Okay, so that reset all the fonts to the default that come with Google. Not outputting all the HTML, that's a win, yep. So if I go over to this side, close that, clear, set ASP, uh, is it set or a export? I think it's export, isn't it? Uh, ASP.NET Core environment equals production. I think that's what we told it to look for, right? Right? Production. Um, so now if I do the uh, watch test, it should output everything for it. Export is for all sessions. Ah, okay. Thank you, Hugo, for clearing that up. Um, that's how little I work with a, with Linux. So I'm learning something new all the time when folks suggest different things here for us. So it didn't rebuild. Good. And now let's see. We should see all the HTML go by. No. And actually it ran faster. Hmm. Hmm. ASP.NET, um, okay. So let me go over here and let's say echo ASP.NET Core. Well, that didn't set anything. Um, I thought we just set that. ASP.NET Core Environment. Do I need to put quotes on this? I don't think so. Yeah, printing to the console. Gareth, very good point. And, right, this is something that, that folks don't understand. Printing to the console is really slow, and it's synchronous. So it literally waits until the console is done painting the screen. Um, so when you log information to the console... It slows down everything. So trying to stop this is actually its actually a pretty good thing. Um, ASP.NET Core underscore environment. Yeah. Right? So if I put quotes around this, does that get me anything? Nope. Why am I not getting that? Right, there's all the, look at all those colors. Uh, but uh, you know what, I blew right past where ASP.NET Core would be. It would have been right up top and it's not there. Environment, you know what, why am I doing it over here? Do it over there. Set ASP.NET Core environment equal Oops. Do we know which one's the fastest? Link for each for loop or for each loop? Well, the for loop and the for each loop will be faster. Still didn't get it in there. Why isn't it letting me set that value? I could put a logging buffer and now put the buffer to the console on a timer so my med th main thread keeps working. I, I, I don't want to be the person that should be doing that. Um, try print env uh, grep on ASP. Nope. So why isn't it letting me do this? Logging framework configured to output to console will do. Yeah, that's what it should do, but I can't. There is no logging framework we can put in there, and that's not set. Okay. Right, I'm trying to flip it. <coughs> I'm trying to flip it so that we are using the other side of this. Please test in release mode. No, please don't. Well, don't unit test in release mode. Um, gosh, how do I turn that stuff back on? 
Um, I'm going to push this up. Um, um, only outputting to the console when ASP.NET Core environment is production. There we go. Oh, about benchmarking purposes. Yes, very good point. All right. So that's all out there in this feature productivity branch. Um, now let me go back over to here. So this should see a, a new commit and should do a little bit of rebuilding, actually. See, there it is. See the yellow dot? That's... Linux Dev, uh, Azure DevOps, building and running all the tests. I don't know why export doesn't work. <laughs> the bald bearded builder is here. Oh, good, good. End of the day, and the pub is calling. Have a good one, unhip coder. I don't know why it's not letting me to set, letting me set variables. I mean. Do I have to do it this way? Uh, that's weird. Right? ASP.NET Core Well, okay, that's there now. <clears throat> it was a bit heavy-handed, but... It's not there. There's something going on there with, with that access. And I'm willing to bet it's because of how I'm on the Chromebook here. I'm willing to bet. Um, okay. Uh, let's go back over to here. Yep, everything built successfully. One minute, eight seconds to build. And when I click into this, we should also see in our log files... Not there. Um, I should see in the build... Come on, show me the build. In the test... See, the test only took eight seconds out here. But I don't have all the HTML confusing... Azure DevOps. So that's what I want when this thing builds out there so that I can see clearly what failed and I don't have all of that debug script going through. So that makes me feel good. Squash and merge this. Um, don't need that. Yes. Quiet verbosity. Yes. Trying to make logging to the console more well behaved. Get rid of that. Attempting to limit output to the console. Only outputting to console when... Yep, there we go. Squash and merge that. All right. And that should have deleted... Yep, let's delete the branch. And I'm going to roll over to that user control branch. Um, here. All right. Um... What branches do I have locally? Yeah, origin, spike user control. Uh, and spike user control. Right. Uh, pull that in. Um, I'm going to get rid of feature productivity because we have it working now. I'm going to merge down into this one, the dev branch that I was working on. And... There we go. Deleted by them. That's fine. Get RM. XML. Fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> get merge. Not merge. Get commit. 
merged so I get all the that and push those changes out oh you stink uh, get pull more conflicts no is that the same one list view razor really List view dot no uh where do we trip up here I don't see <clears throat> well okay um mm. It was uh, here, there, right? List view, razor. There it is. I think I want what was brought in here, what was merged. So I'm going to do a four... I hang on four DD. Yep, get rid of one more of those. Get rid of that also. Ugh. Hang on. Um, I don't need another while is busy. But I do need. Get rid of that one. Um, get rid of that. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's still trying to, <clears throat> still merging. Okay. Um, let me see. Does it does it build? Not get dot net build. Let's see if that works. I know white space. Ooh. How come I'm using a Chromebook? Um, there's a great blog post about why I'm using a Chromebook. the The idea here is that this is a a very affordable development machine that folks can develop, can build with .NET code on um, that anybody can buy. We we set forth a challenge. If you go to my blog at jeffreyfritz.com or csharpfritz.com, both go to the same place. Um, I wanted to see if we got a machine, we got a, a Chromebook for less than $200, would we be able to be productive with this? That worked, uh, merged right what do you mean unmerged files uh oh i didn't um git commit merged right now git push fraction of the price most people spend on a phone yes elliot yes exactly we need to make a Chromebook command to answer that question a little bit. Yep. So this is minimal march where we're showing that you can be a developer with minimal tools. We, you can get in and get started. You can learn. You can find your way around. You can even build some little bit more impressive applications with a Chromebook with free and easy tools that you can get on the internet. Um, it's a little bit of gatekeeping when folks say you must have a MacBook Pro in order to be considered a real developer pros that have been around for a while that 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 have the scratch that have the funds absolutely they will uh are you kidding i thought i merged this didn't i i thought i just merged in those changes no Microsoft tools either is is kind of a challenge to kind of show folks who are um, 
a, a little snobbish about their Linux install, that you can be productive here too. Um, I thought if I do a git pull, um, uh, well, I'm okay. Hang on. Let me go over here. Uh, right. Git pull. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, git checkout dev. Yep. There's that one commit that has the changes I actually want. Um, so now let me go back to the spike version. There we go. Um, merge in those changes. Yep, that's fine. There we go. Push that. So now over here, I should be able to go and do scripts and do watch test. So now my test should be running over here now. There they go. Come on. Do the thing. Let's go. What'd you do? I don't know. I kicked it off and it's just sitting here. Maybe it's doing something. It does take it, do, it does work. It does take a long time, and that's okay. Um, you have a small dev environment toying around with a Raspberry Pi Zero. Works great, but you probably don't want to compile things locally. Exactly. Raspberry Pi devices work great for a desktop type of thing, but you still, even though you spent $30, $40 on a Raspberry Pi, you still need a display. Okay, you could hook it up to a TV. Um, but you still need a handful of things to go into it to make that an entire thing. And that's not a portable device that you're going to be able to take to the office, to the coffee shop, to school. Many, many students in this country, in the United States, are now issued Chromebooks um, as part of their schooling experience here. There we go. Now the tests are running. So, is it complicated to set up compilation on another computer? Asks Blue Blood. Um, I haven't even tried that. But that is what they do with Visual Studio Online. Yep, Gareth's right. When you when you get a Raspberry Pi, you need a keyboard, mouse, SD card, so you have storage space, uh, a display, probably a case as well. Um, a display you can get away with using the family TV, but it's not easy. Power bricking cable, they usually come with a power cable, Raspberry Pi. Tech gatekeeping becomes a real issue in communities that aren't wealthy, yes. When a local school district went to online enrollment only, there were complaints from parents that the enrollment website wasn't mobile friendly. Yes. They don't have any any type of computer except for a phone that has internet access. They don't come with a power cable? I thought they did. Okay, I stand corrected. That feels like a little bit of a shame, but okay. Um, so I'm, I'm in this folder now. I wrote a bit of documentation around the project in here. Let me show you on GitHub because it's easier to see it over here if I change over to that branch. With Visual Studio Code, hey Pac-Man Jr., you can use SSH to remote to another compute, compi computer and use its compute, but edit via VS Code locally. Yes, that, that remote interaction is possible. Um, you know what, let me put that entry in here about where the uh, the live version of the website is, right? Because that was definitely something that, um, I forget who was asking about it earlier, about where, right, Blazor Web Forms Components, I want to make sure you can get to that. Um, is it, is it uh, azurewebsites.net? Is that where it is? There we go. Right. Copy that chalupa. Mm, chalupas. Um, I updated my dot files, didn't I? I thought I pushed that up, didn't I? There we go. Um, dur, 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 dur. Build status, approaching considerations. I feel like it should be up here, almost with a Shields IO. Is there a Shields IO um, mm -hmm. for like the live site or something or samples? Um, funding, issue tracking, license, social, version, other. Um, there was a static one here that we could do as well. 
yeah, static. Let me do my own badge. Label. Uh, live. Um, yeah, live. Uh, oh no, that's not what I wanted. Um, samples live. Oh my goodness, Mr. Demon Wolf. Demon Wolf created my stream with seven viewers. Welcome in. Hello, hello, friends. My name is Jeff Fritz. Thank you so much for joining me uh, from Mr. Demon Wolf's um, stream. Great to see you, Mr. Demon Wolf. Of course, another member of the Live Coders team. How's it going there, friend? What were you working on today? Yes, M to the M1337. I am running on a Chromebook. You have an increased battery life as well. Um, so... Uh, for those of you coming in, joining us, welcome in, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz, and we're doing some development, software development, using a Chromebook in .NET in Linux. So, really, um, putting our stuff out there. Uh, getting more tickets done for your open source project for users of ShareX. Nice. Cool. Let me make badge, right? So, there's the badge now right if I I feel like it should be live samples but samples live whatever that's fine right um, <laughs> so if I were to put it next to the Gitter community right um, so if I did uh, this and uh, view the sample pages um no uh view the component samples uh in your browser let's do that right um and do this and the badge is that there we go right um and an end bracket on that I think that's the right syntax, is it? Is it? Samples live, and it's got an extra pair of brackets on there. Um, it's not going where I want it to. Go back over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I need another parenthesis after it. Right? And a closer there. So this is going to be uh, HTTPS. Is it HTTPS? Sure. Um, Blazor Web Forms Components, uh, Azure Websites.net. I think that's what we want, isn't it? To get that formatted properly. I still have an extra thing over here. But it's going to the right location now. If I control click. Okay, that's good. So I have an extra square bracket at the end of that so get rid of that is that what i'm looking for thank you for the follow uh prof conti welcome in hello hello uh samples live there it is and that looks like it's going to the right place good let me scroll down to the bottom here added link to the live samples commit directly sure um, uh, is that Demetrius Savar? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Need to develop a web application for your finals. Wanted to ask if I could give you tips how to start, what I should learn, and how to make your life easier. Uh, oh my goodness. Thank you for putting that up there. Um, I don't know anything about the web application you're writing. Let's start there. If you choose to use .NET, download the SDK from .NET. Download it from there. You can run the command .NET space new space. Uh, I think it's just web, and you can and you'll build your first application, right? .NET new, and you'll get prompted for a bunch of different templates here. Um, don't build web API uh, crumbs. Uh, da, 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 this. Go back in the buffer. There it goes. Web app. And that'll get you a simple web app. If you're building with C Sharp, that'll get you on the right path so that you can get running again. Um, best of luck to you. 
If you haven't done any, if you don't know your, your source code, your way around this, you're going to run into some issues. But if you build web app there, you'll be able to build with razor pages is what they're called. And those will render on the server side. You can build for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And you should be able to publish and run properly then. Okay. Best of luck to you. If you have a remote headless build server, you can use Shush and Tmux to get to the same environment as using here, even on Android. Nice. You're going to go eat some lunch. Take care, Mr. Demon Wolf. Thank you so much for the raid. Appreciate you joining in. Um, okay, so my readme is updated here so that it has that link. Good. We have some other documentation we should update in here. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to get wrapped up in it today. Um, I did add to the docs over here. So I added a page documentation about the features that are provided and that do work here. Um, this isn't the only piece that's needed for this. Hmm. This is something we started about a week or so ago. So you had a base page that you could build from and work with. It's not working. It's not complete here. Let me show you. If I go back over here, I can run the application. Um, let me go into the samples. There we go. Um, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Give me the uh, readme update. Um, and I can run the application now with .NET Run, and I'll be able to click through see what this looks like while that's going what I should be able to do here is that let it build up top there um, CD dev uh, this um, samples yeah uh, server Right, and I think I put it in. Uh, did I put it in control samples? Mm, I don't think I put it there. I put it in. Maybe it's in index. Yeah, there it is. Inherits Bla Blazor Web Forms components page, but in order to do that, um. It's, uh, what's in host? It adds those. Um, maybe it's in shared. Yeah. Main layout. I think this is it. There it is. We had to inherit from the base layout, so it had this way to pass things around. So I think we need to put that into the mix as well so we can show you need all of these things. There, the website is now listening. It's out here on one of these locations. I'm gonna grab that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, don't need this one anymore, so I'm just going to overlay. And yes, I know. I know. Proceed to localhost. There we go. But it's you can tell it's using the base page because it changed the title this is the title for my page so um, I'm able to interact and do more things the performance on these is not great at all that's right on on a Linux tablet on a on a machine like this yes so um, and that's okay for folks that, that are getting started that's great um, I want to feel what this getting started experience is like it's not easy Folks need to know that, hey, there, there's something going on here that we need to do something about. Um, right. Why am I not? There we go. And, and uh, move that up. It won't move up anymore. Bummer. Um... Yep, you might be working on something small and you don't need all the performance. Definitely a consideration. 
<laughs> Android and iOS were never made to be productive devices. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. You know what? It's about 1230. Let's do this. Let me, um, let me wrap up here today. And let's, um, let's get ready to come back. I'm going to do, I'm going to fix some of this customization and get a theme in here so we can actually read this a little bit. Um, but next time I think we're going to get back in here. We're going to get things set up so that we can do, um, do some real development. Actually, uh, get a little bit more built and working with. Maybe it's a good idea to create some Linux images already set up for development comments. Boom, boom. It's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. For, um, and I, I can definitely get behind that for, um, .NET folks to be able to say, hey, here's a Linux configuration for this. So that you can get things up and running. Maybe, right, we know this is running in a container. Maybe there's a way that we can pull down a container into into Chrome, uh, Chrome OS to work in, that is a little bit better configured with some of these tools and things for us to work with. A software development distro, a .NET development distro of Linux suggest eternal dev coder that's an interesting idea that's a very interesting idea thank you so much everybody for tuning in i really appreciate uh you joining me here today as i continue to work on the chromebook and learn a little bit more about what we're able to do as developers in in a smaller environment um let me head over and see who is streaming on twitch who we can set up and raid i have a good idea but i want to click through anyway here and uh, take a look-see. So we raided our friend Instafluff. Was it yesterday or the day before? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Let's raid. Um, why don't I see it? Hmm. Hmm. You know what? Um, let's raid my friend Brian Lagunas. He's working on updating his plural site course. So we will set that up. Brian's another member of, uh, spell his name right, another member of the Live Coders team. And he's he specializes in building Windows applications with WPF. He, he particularly is the uh, administrator, the owner of the, the owner, the, the manager, the project manager for uh, the PRISM project that will help give you directions and help you build applications you love wpf that's fantastic winter lore games we'll get ready copy one of those statements that we just pasted into into the chat room if you're a subscriber grab this one if you're not grab that one copy it onto your clipboard get ready because we're going to go see brian lagunas thank you so much everybody for tuning in i will see you tomorrow it's friday we'll be writing some code back here i'll have a little bit more customization done and we'll actually build a, a couple more controls here. Not controls, but we'll build some more features for our controls and deploy those tomorrow. Thanks so much. Everybody have a great day. And uh, say hi to Brian for me. All right? Take care.